closer. There we go. It's got a nice ring to it, man. <laughs> I know, it's very sp- resonant. Well, thanks everybody for uh, joining me on the uh, weekly Dalton Collective Hangout. We are at uh, June third, and I just have a quick presentation to walk us through. And then we've got a um, document which is talking about kind of organizational structure and membership. And again, from last week, if you weren't here, we have a goal of getting out a document that spells out membership by June seventeenth. So we've got roughly about, you know, 10, 12 days or so to kind of work this out. And then hopefully we have something more concrete about what membership is. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. Cool. All right. So what's the idea? What's the hypothesis here? Well, the idea is that a group of people, uh, mainly formed on the internet, can come together to create goods and services, and they can do that in a way that allows them the most freedom and flexibility possible, and they can do that all within a a group context that allows them to have their their, those needs met, financial as well as some some of those social needs. So for us, that means three things, fellowship, sustainability, and sovereignty. And fellowship meaning once you are a part of the Dalton Collective, um, that organization or that group of people is mostly the same. We're people focused first, so the group largely stays the same. Some people do leave for some reasons, you know, and people join, but for the most part, you know, it's a static group. Whereas in a traditional company, you might have a, uh, a mission that you're trying to, to achieve, a thing that you're trying to do. And if people don't align with that mission or kind of go off on their own way, then they, they leave the organization and people come and go. But then the, the mission, for the most part, stays the same. So that's some of the key differences and why people are the most important thing in the Dalton Collective. However, we are trying to be sustainable, which means we need to make money to live. We need resources. And so this is very much about making money and making and acquiring assets for stability in our own lives. And we do this collectively together. So how that might work is we might have teams working on specific projects, where in like a company, if you don't align or become misaligned with that team, you can change teams or just sort of take a back seat for a while. But you're still part of the collective. And, and finally, the, the sovereignty part is we want to try to do this on our own terms. So we want to be able to be in control of the tools that we use. We want them to work for us. And we want to be able to make decisions for ourselves. So I, I've been thinking about um, some of the parallels through through history. And um, this is the, uh, the mood that I had. I, I visited this place a couple of years back. And this is in the, the south of France. This is a town, a little town called um, Obed or Bleed or something like that. And it's it's medieval. It was had its height in like the 14th century. And it's right on top of a pretty steep hill. So all of the streets are just sort of these staircases up. These are the two churches in, in this town. And at its height, it had about 900 inhabitants. And if, and if you're looking at this, you can see this is some pretty hefty, you know, stonework. Now, of course, you know, the Catholic Church helped with the financing and some of all this. So it wasn't just the, the work and the efforts of the 900 inhabitants, but it was a walled kind of town which farmed the, the underlying valley. And the, the whole thing here was about, I think it's like 600 feet in elevation gain from the bottom to the top. So it's, it's quite steep. And all of the accommodations are somewhat modest, but they have got a few things that you, know, you might expect to find in every kind of medieval little town, big walls and all that. But um, to this day, the, the community, which describes this sort of municipality, it's about 1,200 people. And they're still roughly doing the same kinds of things, farming and, and agriculture and that kind of thing. But it, it was interesting to me that, you know, a thousand years ago, roughly, or maybe six or 700 years ago, um, a group of people 
around that size could do could build something like this. I mean, even if they didn't have all the resources from their own, but they were able to funnel those resources into building this thing where they could live and work and, you know, that kind of thing. And then in uh, World War II, uh, during the armistice in 1940, there was actually a, a, a artist commune at the very top of this place. And that was the last time it really had serious um, inhabitants. And that, that, that project led to some interesting works of art, but it wasn't a very long lived project, but it was an interesting kind of corollary to, I think, to something kind of like what we're trying to do here, less terrestrial, obviously, but even still like a group of people coming together to do, to do things in sort of self-interest. So that's all I had for um, the presentation part. And let's move now to uh, the Google Doc that Eric, that you put together there. And um, if people don't yeah. have the link, I'm going to go ahead and post it in the chat here. Is that going to show up on the recording? Well, too late. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. Anyway. We'll make a copy of it. It's fine. I just worry about somebody trolling us from YouTube and <laughs> wiping it out. Not that there's a ton in there yet, but. Okay. Yeah. We'll just make a copy, but that's, yeah, that's fine. No big deal. Okay. So in this document here, um, and thanks for kind of spearheading this, Eric. That's much appreciated. Um, it's got some ideas around um, organizational structures, what that might look like. And here I am, um, you know, there's a couple ideas in terms of legal designations we could kind of at least think about, like co-ops or LLCs, that kind of thing. Um, I know in um, co-ops recently, there's been some interesting things that you can do in terms of flexibility in terms like with ownership. So in this case, it would be probably more like a workers co-op, something other than where there are different kinds of co-ops. There are other kinds of co-ops that aren't sort of like producer co-ops aren't really collectively owned, I should say. Um, an LLC would be um, a good thing if we ever needed or wanted to take investment. And then a general partnership is sort of a default. It doesn't even offer any kind of liability protection, as far as I'm aware, or very, very little. Um, now, my legal understanding is somewhat limited. Um, Eric, you've got a bit more background here than I do. If, any thoughts on structure? You can do a limited liability partnership as well. So that's one thing that you could do. I do think it's a smart plan to, if we plan on having people financially contribute to Dalton Collective, but not be a party to it, that we limit the liability that Dalton would have back to those shareholders via something like a limited liability. Or really, if we're just taking any actions in the marketplace, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If we're not just producing value somehow independent to the structure of Dalton and then contributing through something like dues or whatever, then probably good to limit liability. Um, I don't know anything about cooperatives, really. Um, I do know I was watching a debate recently and this like fairly communist leaning uh, person who was in part of the debate was like talking about how workers cooperatives have some of the highest level of success for startups and also have some of the highest level of like worker satisfaction. And it might be self-selecting to the type of people who would organize in that method, right? But I do think it's interesting to consider that that appears to be the case at least uh, to the extent that cooperatives exist in the States, which is a very limited segment of the market, you know, so. Yeah, that's in the experience that I had, uh, from the, the previous co-op that I worked at, uh, it was, it was modeled after REI, which is not a workers co-op, right? So it was supposed to be like this consumer co-op, but most people just wanted it to be a co-op, uh, co like a workers co-op. And that actually caused a lot of the tension in, in the group because you'd had some people mostly in leadership who designed the thing to be a certain like way of doing things. And the people who are participating really didn't want it to be that thing. Yeah. Um, I, and I think it is more common to have 
a worker kind of co-op or a producer co-op where everybody is like an, like an orchard owner or something like that Mm -hmm. Uh, outside of a consumer co-ops are fairly rare. I think. Well, what I thought was odd about that one was like, like, I mean, it wasn't hard to become a member. Like I be, I became a member and and then suddenly I got a voice, you know, and then it's like, you know, all the drama happened. It's like, suddenly like I somehow like, you know, I, you know, I did like one bounty for them and like, it was like, it didn't really work too well. And so I was like, uh, I'm going to go do something else, you know? Um, uh, but, but like I had a right to yeah. vote I and still do. It, I, I, yeah, I probably still, I don't know. I haven't paid my 2020 fees or anything. So maybe I'm, boot, I, I have no idea, you know, but, but I, I, I that, that's kind of weird because it's like, it's like, why, like, why do I get a choice in like how this like functions when I'm just like somebody who paid twenty dollars and like showed up in KYC? You know, it makes no sense. Yeah. So I, I um, but I think we're we're roughly aligned in in some sense that it uh, if if it is a worker co op that could be a really great benefit if it gives us the the legal structure and protections and opportunities that we're looking for, as well as it enables each of us to own something of Dalton in proportion to what we've put in or something like that. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's where I, we're pushing. I think I've, I've mentioned this before, but, um, uh, D org is a, a, a BB LLC, a blockchain based limited liability company. Okay. Uh, and we have like lawyers that like specialized in it. Like uh, I don't really know the details, but I mean, I mean, that's an avenue to pursue. I'm like also under the impression, I mean, I'm not a lawyer person by any means whatsoever, but I'm under the impression that like, you know, you can have an LLC and have a more exotic or, you know, like, Oh, it's like decided through the multi-sig in combination with like these additional bylaws that like we decided or whatever. And, and it still be like an LLC. It doesn't have to necessarily be like legally defined as like a workers co-op, but we can have like sort of like privileges or like sort of like organizational consensus model, whatever of a worker co-op while still it being like a, Maybe more traditional LLC or like Delaware C Corp or something, you know, like. Yeah. And so we probably have a lot of options. I just, yeah. yeah. We'll probably need to take advice. <laughs> when we yeah, that, definitely. Right. <laughs> but thinking about it is good. Okay. I could maybe bring in, like, I think maybe Ori or so the person, whoever at DORG is, like, who's like talked to lawyers to give us, like, a their rundown of like the like their experience like of course they're not a lawyer but like they you know they, they went through the process of seeking counsel and can maybe direct us in the process of seeking counsel and so on sure I should i take cool. that down as a, an action item for you christian uh sure sure i will uh identify uh, re- the person responsible and try to bring them in cool okay so i'm just going to say that you're going to invite um eagle uh, what was it like a coordinator maybe? Yeah. Sh- yeah. I, I, yeah. Legal coordinator of DORG, whoever that is. Um, I, I think it's Ori. Um, okay. Uh, I think it was like Ori and Jordan, like they're the two who started it, but I think Ori is kind of more like the guy who like does that thing. Cool. All right. So for moving, moving on to the kind of the next one joining, um, this is probably, I mean, that's the only part of the, uh, the heading here. So it, it, Eric, do you think this is the question of, um, if somebody had either seen what we're up to or maybe join the chat and they're like, oh, this is kind of interesting. How do I join? Right. Is we that- need to have some formal process for that. Exactly. And maybe yeah. that's structured. So I think to Christian's point, like if you have an LLC that's structured to provide you the, um, membership model that looks like a cooperative uh there's probably something to do with variant stock types that you are issued uh and joining would then be a matter of what i'm trying to say is joining is contingent on the structure of the organization to some extent Mm -hmm. okay 
And, that's and so I think it's, it's, it's really critical that we lay out, once we know the organization of the structure, we lay out that joining and we, we need to make sure that that's non-problematic also, because there have been some lawsuits about people, you know how they did those like, um, I don't know what they call them. I think dead drops of some coin initiatives where they like passing out a bunch of coins uh, from a yeah. cryptocurrency and that that can cause you in different contexts to be like a money exchanger or a stock issuer. And that can be problematic. So we need to, uh, we would probably want to run the joining process by the attorneys that we talk to as well. Okay. Would you say this is blocked by organizational structure? How do you mean? Oh, yes. You can't like know this and tell me know that. I think so. We can. We could theorize as to how we'd like the joining structure to work and present okay. that as evidence for somebody who's helping us to try and decide the organizational structure. But yeah, I think it's one than the other. Okay. So what we could do now is just to find would be nice. We don't really know because or it might need to be modified based on what structure we have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So one thing I know that would be nice is that joining uh, initially doesn't require a financial obligation. Why? Tell me why that would be nice. I'm not saying that you're wrong there. Like one of the things that I was looking at is that if membership responsibilities include dues, we can have them over a number of different methods like actual dues or providing in-kind uh, contributions or uh, providing some service. Is is the providing service what you're thinking of there? Or are you thinking joining without having contributed really anything but to be part of the initiative? Right. So I, I think of joining as primarily a social function first. Okay. Because, because in that order, right? Like people first. And in this case, you don't you don't join a friend group to pay just money. Be, by like paying 10 bucks, you know, like, yeah. Hey, can I, can I hang out with you guys? Here's, here's $50. Okay. It's like, you have to like, you gotta be cool. You gotta like want to do this. You gotta show up. You gotta, you know, that's what it means for us to like know who should be part of Dalton and who is like, should not. So we need like something like nominal membership where it's, you are a member at the most basic level where mm -hmm. you, you, own the title of member, but don't have any rights or responsibilities as a result. Yeah, like an introductory status. And we can call that membership. That I don't have any problem with that. But it should be clear that this is not like, you know, like, like, you, like you said, you have no responsibilities and no privileges. Yep. You can join the chat. You can show up to meetings. That's well, I guess that's that's a privilege in some sense, right? Yeah. Okay. N none that will cost the collective as the more functional group, some amount of responsibility back to you other mm -hmm. than permission to enter. I think that that exists in things that's like club membership. You know what I mean? Like you can go to the, if you're a part of the Kiwanis group, you know what I mean? You can go show up at the meetings, but maybe you have to be more, more participatory in those meetings to get any sort of status and that sort of thing. The first is some sort of nominal <laughs> membership or no responsibility no, with no responsibilities and few rights or few responsibilities and few rights. What were you going to say, Christian? I said, I was just going to point out that like, um, uh, I think like not only like varying like degrees of being in, but also maybe like qualitatively differentiated, right? Like, for example, like somebody might be like, you know, like subscribing to some services that Dalton provides and like in some sense, you know, like we attribute some sense of membership to that, you know, but maybe like, you know, for most people that like is, you know, people pay for that, you know, but like orthogonally, like maybe somebody who's like, you know, sweat equity or whatever like or has like done like a large like you know capital injection in the past or whatever as like a completely sort of like heterogeneous like track of membership mm -hmm. um you know then like affords that sort of um possibility and so on um 
I like that idea of yeah. recipients of our services being in some way members of the collective as well. That's cool. So in the way REI does it, because this is sort of a consumer idea, right? you don't have to be a member to buy anything from them, obviously. But if you do, like become a member, you get like a rebate. So it's still a consumer good that you're really getting. And you get like the the sort of, you know, cachet of being an REI member, but you don't really get many other, like you don't get access to the company itself. Like that's Don't different. you get voting rights through their? Yeah, but I think it's- But there's it's, so many of you. <laughs> it's so clearly not really like any real power or anything like yeah. that. But, and and it's meant to, and it's quite, quite kind of discouraged. Like they don't want you to participate. Like okay. they want you to buy stuff, right? Sure. Um, but like, but I, I, funny enough, right? You, if you're an employee, you have a lot more influence over the the corporation or the product of REI, but still not really that much, um, you know, power like uh, voting power either. Mm -hmm. Which is something that we want to achieve, also, right? Like, my kind of understanding of how the let's talk about just like the 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 top functional membership qualities or, or classifications, even those would not have like a substantially different uh, voting capacity so that you don't have one person wagging the dog at the top of the organization. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and to some extent it might even be very limited in, in the sense of what membership could quote unquote vote on. So something like I could see like a vote of no confidence would certainly be something in leadership. So whatever leadership emerges from this structure, you should be able to throw those people out if they're not doing a good job. Got it. Yeah. So like, like different member categories can have like different like conditions for like onboarding and different conditions for like being like offboarded um mm -hmm. and and like um uh, shoot there's something else that i was gonna say oh yeah and like the affordances being different right like mm -hmm. and so it's like like maybe like the more customer oriented one maybe what they get to vote on is like you know we're, we're deciding like like you know like the, like the, the people like building things okay maybe like they get to decide like okay like these are the set of things of, of like next services that we decide to build out. Like, we, like these are different possibilities, but like we want to like empower like our customer base to like make like the final decision there. And so then like the customers then are able to like vote on like those different possibilities, you know, or something to that effect. Or at least get discounts. Yeah, or get discounts, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd say if we're if we're looking for if we're looking to encourage customers to become members, I think you just go a consumer model, which is to say, uh, if it costs twenty dollars a year to join, what you get is some rebate at the end of the year based on your usage. So if you use a lot of storage, you're gonna get some rebate back at the end of the year on storage. So it's gonna be cheaper than the next time. That makes I mean, sense. That, that's the primary mm -hmm. way I would structure. Um, let's call it consumer membership or customer membership, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there, there'll be producers in Dalton, which is mostly us that, and then hopefully there will be also um, consumers, but they don't have to be members. But if they did want to be, they should get some economic benefit for for doing so, based on their consumption. And then if there were some other rights in terms of steering product or something like that, I think that would be appropriate. I just don't think it should be like, we, we shouldn't count on a lot of engagement. So we should never make it like something we actually need. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just as like, yeah, yeah. But like, if you want to, sure, go ahead. We may maybe even make it non-binding. So it's even more pointless to do, but, but also maybe <laughs> yeah, a nice yeah. signal. So then there's the customer membership. Then there's also nominal membership, 
which I would position as slightly higher in ordination than the customer because they're like part of the entity rather than just a passive consumer of the product. Yeah. And also the customer, their membership can expire. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's, so it's, it's conditional. people mm -hmm. so we've got people people first membership focused on joining for social interaction yeah We're centered on yeah yeah then yeah, so, i i oh, go ahead uh there should be um almost like a coming of age point right so you you might join from a from a nominal perspective, but then there there should be some, you know, like uh, yeah, like if you see you you wrote here active participating member or there should be whatever the next stage is. That's like all right, now you're in. You're still low on the totem pole in terms of either revenue share or or asset allocations, but you've made it in such that you're you know this is still your lifetime membership thing. And that, and that's a point in time that we commemor commem commemorate, commemorate, right? yeah, yeah. Like it's important. Like people show up to that ceremony. I'm gonna post this in chat again for clockworking here. I like that name, by the way, Clockwork King. It's very, it's very good. <laughs> Clever. I've had that handle since I was 15. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Is there, so then there's like, net, oops, I didn't mean to do that. There's necessarily a leadership, mem would leadership be considered a different membership classification? No, okay. I don't think so. I think these three, these three designations is really all you need. And the hierarchy that sort of evolves out of that is something more like a title, role, or responsibility, right? So you can still call yourself something potentially if you're in a different role, but that's, that's a, that's a subset of being active. Mm -hmm. So are those the three classifications that we need to target there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, unless, is there any reason for making a designation for like excommunicated retired, like excommunicated or retired? Like you actually excommunicated, like you did something bad that hurt everybody. And we kicked you off the island. Okay. I mean, I don't know if it's useful or not. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, let's just identify that we may have a condition like that. I, I've never would have thought of it. Um, and this should be sort of extreme, and it's meant to be. But still, like, like it's similar to you know the real thing in the Catholic Church, something like that, where you've got to do something pretty bad to do to to get to get to, to earn that, and there should be a process around it. Is the, this is the more important thing? You can't just be like some person in leadership throwing down a hammer or something. There needs to be more participation with the whole group. Should there be a process for just like spitballing on this for a second? Not that it matters too much, but should there be a process for redress? Should they be able to like petition for being removed from that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is uh, appeal. Yeah. And ideally, that appeal would be outside of Dalton, meaning uh, some other third party that everybody agrees to ahead of time to to resolve that kind of issue. And I'm just fine using like traditional mediation. Like there's mediators all over the world. Oh yeah. So that shouldn't be an issue as long as like both parties agree. Well, I'm I don't want to overthink it, but just simple mediation. It, mediation oh, this, can be stipulated. Go ahead, sorry. 
uh, th- that um, I was actually going to mention this earlier. Um, it might make sense somewhere to um, uh, uh, put some like arbitration clause or something in somewhere, like like namely, so like you know, like some like disagreement, like you just you you you're not going to be able to take it to court. Like that it just simplifies things and like oh. you know, like uh. I mean, it really saves everybody money, you know, because then you don't have to pay like lawyer fees or anything. Right. Um, and, yeah. And, and likely what this, the conflict will be, right, is probably, hey, we all agreed that my stake in this project was going to be X. You gave me Y. I overheard this and you guys think that. And, you know, it just gets, there's, there'll be a dispute over how much resources somebody thinks they, they are owed. Mm-hmm. And then the resolution will be, Here's your check, leave. And but it'll also be an issue of well, how big is that check, right? Like mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's why it's like it's if everybody just like agrees to like third party like arbitration and like in advance and that it will be like this body that does the arbitration, then it's just it it nips like the legal process and everything in the butt. It just makes it simple. Um so can we also so put I'm one a hold to that? What? I said, I'm, but I'm also not like beholden to that. Sure. I just know that that's a thing that organizations. I think, that's a good idea. I think I, you make um, a good point. I am open to forgiveness as well, of course. So that should be part of the excommunicated member. Like, okay, some time has passed. People, cool, cooler heads. What's the process of reconciliation? Should there be a natural? Well, we don't have to think about it that far. I agree. I think that those are all good. It could be just consider. starting over. That could be just fine. Mm. But I don't want it to sound like it's final and we can't go back on it. What else? Uh, let me see here. I'm just going to take a note on the, this is like, so C is the point at which we have like, you know, it's like you're in the club. Okay, I think, I mean, we, we should scope this as tightly to membership as possible, meaning there's going to be some things that fall out of this that we'll be wanting to think about, but probably shouldn't get distracted. Like, okay, once you're a member and we have revenue or whatever, like how do we dish that up? That's important to know, but that's not actually a membership question in, ten, in, in like who is a member and who is not. No, it's a membership benefit question. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's cl- it's nice and clean to have roughly two designations of membership, right? So this is like, well, you know, actually it's three. But this, this nominal membership, which is like, okay, anybody can come in and be a member. Mm-hmm. Um, but you don't get your pin until you graduate into this active participating membership. Well, and we'll maybe change the names on these too. Yeah. Um, And then it's also really useful to think about what does a consumer membership look like? Cool. That's really helpful. And of course we can, once we have some, legal opinions about this, then it'll really get um, finalized, I'd I'd say. But for the 17th, I'd say just having a document we can share that says this is what we're hoping to do, or at least this is what we've thought about doing, which will be mostly what we have right here. That's really the goal with the next goal of actually making this more real by talking to some lawyers. Yeah. I have... 
one part of the responsibilities I wanted to call everyone's attention to. Yeah. Like I was just, again, this is just me going off here. So like if anyone doesn't like a part of this, totally open to changing it. But one of the things that like I was on a walk with my fiance and I thought of this idea that for sweat equity out of the gate, we're not going to have ongoing initiatives that people can participate in necessarily. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that came to mind is something like angel investing, where those of us who can partic who can participate be via either dues or in-kind contributions could then support some initiative that a sweat equity person is attempting to bring into the fold um, by providing them with either, you know, whatever they need to continue their effort. But then that sweat equity participant would need to report to us like in one of these meetings once a month on the status of their project. So it's very much like the bounty efforts that we see in, um, in urbit.org, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or from Talon's side. I don't know. What, what do you think of that? Well, in, in some ways, if Dalton is to be successful, research and development is potentially one advantage, meaning if we can do research and development on new and interesting technologies cheaper in this through this sort of structure than it than like a traditional firm could, we're going to have an advantage there as well. So, I, yeah, it makes sense to me. Right on. Okay, so in terms of um, dues, yeah, I think, um, well, shoot. You know what, I, I like in some ways the specificity of like an optional $5 don't like do, but you could also just make it something like, um, I mean, just like the church does, some percentage of um, like, you know, half a percent of. Let me, th let me think about that. <laughs> uh, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was actually in a union for three years of my life. And the way that dues were handled there is that it was a set amount that you would pay each month. The, uh, the problem that I always saw is that when you go to union meetings, even though your, your local chapter would have maybe 300 people, the total number of people who would attend a union meeting, it would be no exaggeration, about 11 people. And it would be regulars who always did this. And it became very easy to distance yourself from uh, union membership. I. I think that it would have to be something that is like a set amount that any person would be able to contribute. Uh, but it would, I, I think it would have to entail some amount of sweat effort, period. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise it becomes this scenario where people who uh, are distant from the chapter, uh, who just pay their dues each time, they, <laughs> I would see people come in once, uh, once a year and complain about how everything is going. And then the local, uh, the people who actually, you know, I, I was about to say ran the union, but who actually contributed uh, would constantly have to explain, well, this is why we're doing this and this is why we're doing that. Mm. So I think there would have to be some sort of active participation Totally agree. Uh, and something I think Eric and I at least talked about last week, maybe, when it came to this, is that there should be some optionality here. Meaning, like, if you're at a point where you're joining the collective, actually, you know what, who would be a good example of this is, say, Somless wanted to join, who is, you know, I have a lot of respect for Somless. He's done a lot of cool things in his life, and he's at a much more 
let's say mature level than than I'm at, right? He's he's what he brings to the table for all of us is something more like a mentorship and access and connections and a bunch of other things. But I think somebody like him should should probably contribute in some sort of dues way, in some sort of way like that, in an optional way, such that he can show us what he thinks of us through his sort of through the, through that channel. Uh, but that's only one way of thinking about it. You know, putting a lot of time and hard effort into something definitely makes you want it more. <laughs> so I, it's a bit of a tough question, but that's, that was the kind of the, re, the rationale behind dues who would it be for members who are later on in their career, who are, who are advising and mentoring, who could, who could give resources to the group and are participating for those reasons, not necessarily for the financial ones. No, I, I agree. What I meant, like I said, I was saying like, in addition to having dues, you oh, have, yeah, you would, there would, mm -hmm. you, what, I, what I was saying is like, you cannot, I don't think you can just have paying dues and then not, you know, in some way participating. Agreed. Or yeah, that, mm -hmm. that was my point. Cool. But I mean, I, I'm not going to stop anybody who wants to contribute financial resources, even if they're just getting started. Like, we shouldn't. Yeah. Or if they want to give us money and not show up, I'm okay with that also. <laughs> right. I, I think it mostly it's just the option. It, it's optional. Um, but I was explaining also that I think last week too that. Um, these kinds of things tend to becoming become signals or, you know, like signaling mechanisms. Hey guys, look how much I put into the, to the Dalton collective this week. So, you know, I don't know it, but I definitely leave it on, but yeah, I mean, in here it says if they're able to contribute, so it's not like required. So I think we just leave it leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, no, no contribution Olympics. Yeah. Uh, so, but dues in kind is most Eric right. It's mostly the same idea as the, the number one. It's just if it's some kind of asset. Yeah, yeah, like an investment. Like I would, you know, you had talked about like co-housing at one point as like a, a you know a pipe dream goal of, mm -hmm. of Dalton and if somebody gave land to Dalton I think that should be considered really highly valuable um, in terms of their participation yes. but yeah so yeah I actually think uh, what would be amazing is to have some sort of like almost like a, you know some plot of land with structures on it that you can stay in as a uh, meeting place for Dalton because I imagine Dalton will be you know flung over many different continents and but if we could have some regular cadence that we could all come together for like big meetings or whatever and all stay at the same place we really that'd be pretty cool not that we can't do that just by yeah just like renting a place and i think we'll absolutely do that like that is a goal of mine is to, to make sure everybody can get together and meet space at some point after the world after, cools uh, down well, I guess quarantine's kind of over now, right? So, as long as you're, now, um, you know, I'm not actually not going to go there. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's see what else. Uh, benefits. So yeah, this is the place where I don't really think we should put too much time and effort into it just because this is going to be really hard. Like <laughs> how, to, how to actually divvy up cash and assets like as equitably as possible and that's going to be a trick so maybe what we can say for now is that we know that one of the things that we want one of the nice to haves will be flexibility in terms of defining the benefits that members receive in totally. the future yeah 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 especially if we hold assets and they're volatile in price or, mm -hmm. you know, like the star itself whoo you know, can you imagine if we all held a par portion of that and it was just skyrocketing in value? And then, of course, as things do, they just crash. And then it's like, well, wait a minute. I was counting on that. I took out a loan based on that collateral or mm -hmm. whatever else. <laughs> all right. 
Well, I think we got some pretty great thoughts. So thanks everybody for putting some time and effort into this. Um, and like I said, this is going to be due the 17th, but we do have a couple um, action items. So Christian, you're going to make some inquiries with Dorg. Yes. Yes. Um, let me think if I've got, I've got a few legal friends in the blockchain space too, that we might look into. I think that the, the I do think it's going to be a priority the more we, we kind of work on this. So, you know, making it happen is important, but I mean, lawyers are expensive, so we'll have to pass the hat probably before long. I probably have a copy of like whatever agreement I signed to join. And I think, yeah, I mean, I could probably like also like, if I get obtain like all there's like the legal documents that we have for New York, maybe even like I I I'm gonna see why not. Like I, I, s- I signed all the paperwork, presumably I have access to that. Um Yeah, exfiltrate them to us. Let's do it. <laughs> Just yeah. copy yes. paste. Right. <laughs> I think they uh they're more than willing to do that because like they well, want cool. many Dorks, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to end the recording here, but of course we can stick around if you want to chat more about who or anything else that strikes your fancy. All right, but see everybody next week.